then what would happen? Let's say they're again the same sigma. Uh, then the electric field in the middle would add up, right? The electric field of a negative charge is towards it. The electric field of a positive charge is away from it. So they would add up. So it would be sigma over E0. And then away uh, on the other hand, uh, outside of it, this one would be sigma over 2 E0. This one would be towards it. So the electric field would be 0. The, over here, the electric field would be 0. So having two charged plates, oppositely charged, would be a good way of trapping the electric field lines so that their, the electric field mainly stays inside. It doesn't leak out to the outside. The electric field outside is uh, zero. So you could trap the E field inside and have a concentrated electric field. That's known as a capacitor right there. That's the idea behind the capacitor. You take two plates, put a voltage difference between them, have a negative charge, positive charge, and trap uh, electric field lines and uh, electric energy. So that's where we learn, uh, we're going to learn about a capacitor in chapter 26. That's the idea of a capacitor. Okay, now if we, if this formula is correct, it should give us the same answer that we would get if we did it the real way, right? Remember how we've been checking every time. We've been checking to see if we get the same answer using Gauss's law versus the, the real way. What's the real way? The real way is to, by saying real way, I mean the, the, the methodical way of finding the electric field would be doing like this. Right? You would integrate. So what we could do, the, the way would be, to, if we want to find a sheet, we would get like a disk. OK? We would get like a disk. Uh, uh, I believe in class, I showed you how to find the electric field of a ring. I'm not, I don't quite remember if I did it, but I think I did. I showed you how to find the electric field of a ring. through the center axial uh, line, right? Uh, then in order to find the electric field of a solid disk, you would integrate over all those rings. You, you would integrate over all those rings to get a solid disk, OK? And I believe the book does that. I have it open to, uh, in the sixth edition, it's on page 723, 722. It's in chapter 23. So in chapter 20, somewhere in there, in the seventh edition, it might be a different page number. But uh, somewhere in there, the book has an example where they do that, and they find the electric field of a disk, a distance x away. And here's the formula they get. Uh, e equals 2 pi k sigma. where sigma is the surface charge density of the disk, 1 minus x over x squared plus r squared 1 half. OK. So um, and uh, this one, we should be able to use this. So if this is the electric field for any distance x, right? We should be able to show that this one becomes that when the x goes to 0, becomes uh, sigma over 2 is 0, right? So as, the, as I get closer to the disk, then the shape of the disk should not matter anymore. And the electric field should be constant. So let's find the limit of this as x goes to 0. What do we get? 
put zero here, put zero here. Well, if you put zero here, well, this is some number. Put zero there, that's zero. So this becomes one. Okay? And then, well, therefore, that's it. 2 pi k sigma. Right? But k is equal to 1 over 4 pi e0, right? The two constants are related. Okay, and then pi, pi cancel, 2, 4 cancel, sigma over 2 e0. Nice, huh? So it's always really good to see that Gauss's law is not something just magical, magical. It's giving us an answer. We don't know what it means. Gauss's law, it's only giving you a limiting case when you get close to the object, you know? Now, what should the limit of that give me as x goes to infinity? What should it give me? It should begin to appear like a point charge, right? So it should give me kq over r squared, or kq over x squared. So whatever formula you have, they should generally fit that, that pattern. As you go away from it, it should appear to be a point charge. As you get close to it, it should give you the answer that Gauss's law gives you, you see? So would, how would we do that? As x goes to infinity, what would be the limit of that? Infinity, infinity, they're both infinity. Uh, what's the limit of that? You could use uh, Gauss's law. I mean, uh, L'Hopital's rule. With L'Hopital's rule, what's the limit of that? You take the derivative of both the top and the bottom, right? 1 over uh, half to 2 cancels. Uh, it ends up being on the top. What is that? Right, remember L'Hopital's rule is, tells you what's the limit of any kind of function when you can't figure it out using normal methods. And then you take the derivative of both top and the bottom. So what we get here? It didn't really help us, huh? So it ended up being infinity, infinity again. Divide everything by x squared, OK. So what does that give you? So you end up with, uh, so the L'Hopital's rule didn't help that much here. But if we go like this, divide everything by x squared, by x, yeah. You get uh, 1 plus r squared over x squared to the 1 half. Limit of that goes to what? 1. OK, well, it's telling us the limit of this as x goes to infinity is 1. 1 minus 1, 0. So the electric field goes to 0. That's good. It should go to 0. But it, it, we, it didn't give us this behavior. I mean, this goes to 0 too, right? Limit as x goes to infinity goes to 0. They both go to 0, but it didn't, it didn't really do what we wanted it to do. Uh, we wanted it to look like kq over x squared. What other method is there of uh, showing, doing that? <laughs> 